You want to know something that I really like? Squire Starcasters. <laughs> I launched this channel with a demo of the Squire Classic Vibe Starcaster back in 2019, and my friends at Sweetwater have sent me a new Squire Starcaster. This time it's the Squire Contemporary Active Starcaster, and it has something I'm not sure I've ever played before. Active Humbuckers. But aren't Active Humbuckers just for metal? Let's find out. Welcome to Get Offset, my name is Emily and you're a gift to those around you. This is the Squire Contemporary Active Starcaster and this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. There is so much I genuinely love about Sweetwater from their selection to their prices, but one of the big reasons I'm a personal fan is their commitment to customer service. I can recommend folks shop at Sweetwater and know that they are going to be treated with the respect and attention they deserve, and that makes me feel good, especially when someone is making a big purchase like a guitar or amp. You wanna feel cared for, and Sweetwater does a great job at making me feel that. Time to talk about this guitar though. Despite not having F-holes, this is still a semi-hollow guitar, which is good because if this was a full-on solid body, it'd probably be pretty heavy, but I'm, I'm not too fussed about the weight of this one. If I had to guess, it's probably around seven pounds, so really not too bad. The Squire Contemporary Active Starcaster has two active humbuckers, a main volume and tone, 22 frets, and a 12 inch radius on a roasted maple neck. It also has this sculpted heel to make access to those upper frets easier. I don't have this on a lot of guitars, that sculpted heel, but every time I have a guitar that has that, even though I'm not a big up high on the frets kind of guy, it really is nice for those times when I do venture higher up the fretboard. The active pickups feature ceramic magnets for a higher output and are made for distorted tones, but we'll see how those cleans sound with them too. You most associate active humbuckers like this with modern metal players and serious shredders like Jeff Loomis, but don't put actives in a corner. Hey. Prince played active pickups in his cloud guitar, and though he could shred, Prince wasn't what you would call a metalhead. Des Dickerson, though, okay, I digress, I digress. I'm gonna play this thing in a second, but first I wanna touch on one or two of the super nice fit and finish elements of this guitar, because if you're watching this video, it's probably because you can't hold one in your hands. I got it in the gold finish, and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to make this out, but uh, they've carried the gold color into the headstock here, and I think that's just fantastic. I am not the biggest fan of matching headstocks, but this is lovely, and I wish more guitars had this kind of touch. The other color in this series also has that nice little touch there. Meanwhile, the classic vibes just have, uh, it's kind of like a black uh, accent. So I this is special, it's very nice. And it also has this double binding, which is, and the black hardware, gorgeous, as is the roasted maple neck. I really love the contrast of this guitar. I think it's very, very handsome. I mean, yeah, it, look, it's just a beautiful guitar, but what really matters is how it sounds. I'm going to get some clean tones through the Benson Chimera plugin from Mixwave, and then I'm gonna use some patches from Native Instruments Guitar Rig 7 for some metal tones and some just general rock as well. All right, let's hear it clean. I'm in drop D because why not? <laughs> That was the neck. Let's go to the bridge. All right, just strumming through some stuff. I think this actually sounds really, really good, clean. I did uh, adjust the EQ a little bit on the amp. I increased the treble just a smidge and dropped the bass just a little bit. Obviously, I am not gonna be able to EQ to everyone's taste, but I, you know, I think this sounds pretty good. <laughs> jazz
Now to the middle. I'm gonna try something different. How about a little bit of country? Uh, this one's kind of hard, so please bear with me. Okay. settings it's not as twangy as I would normally like it when I'm playing a riff like that. Um, that being said I know it can twang with some compression with different EQ with everything just tuned correctly. That is obviously just how playing different genres work but all that's to say is I think the cleans have really good bones. They sound a lot better frankly than I expected them to do. I've never really played uh, ceramic or active pickups. Uh, actually, I have played ceramic pickups. I've never played active ceramics. <laughs> but so far, I am really enjoying them. I'm enjoying playing the guitar. The, the neck has a satin finish. It feels really fast. The radius feels really good. The fretwork is quite nice. So, so far, I, I'm genuinely enjoying playing this. <laughs> Uh, unrelated, did you know that Get Offset has a Patreon? And did you know that you can get access to our exclusive Discord server when you join at $5 or above? Well, now you do. Now I'm gonna move into just a distorted tone, overdriven tone perhaps, uh, might be a better word. I'm moving into the Guitar Rig plugin and those patches. I'll put those on the screen and drop the names that those patches are given, their stock patches but I think they sound really good. So let's hear them. I'm gonna start on the neck. One thing I love about this guitar is how, even with some distortion, that neck retains a lot of its clean and clarity. Versus the bridge. I think that was a good example of it, just the arpeggiated notes. Versus. It gives the guitar so much with regards to dynamics. I've read a lot about different active pickups and a lot of them talk about how the neck has like bell-like qualities while the bridge is for chugging and I finally, finally know what they mean by that. Man. this guitar. <laughs> I 
Oh, man. and get into some more metal sounds. Once again, I'm gonna pause and set that up. Let's start in the neck. I, I can be honest, I don't think there's a noise gate on this patch. Rick over there, do you hear like a faint sound. No? Hmm. I'll put on the screen if there's a noise gate, but this is very, very quiet. I do think that's kind of one of the points of active pickups, but middle position. <gasps> I've never really played stuff like that before, and that's a trivium song and I'm playing it a lot slower than it's supposed to be played. Now the metal I grew up with was more like I'm gonna be honest, it's still really hard to play on the 22nd fret. Though I did try it on a Starcaster that did not have that neck heel contour and it was impossible. I would not say it's particularly possible for me still. Goodness gracious me. I don't remember where it was. I'm trying. Understand that I'm trying. Again, they're probably playing it much faster than I am. sick <gasps> if you are liking anything you've seen or heard in this video or anywhere really please hit up sweetwater's affiliate link in the video description when you use that link i get a small portion of the sale shared with me it's a great way to support the channel doing things that let's be honest with ourselves and each other 
we were probably gonna do anyway. And uh, one thing I almost forgot to hit on is the tapped harmonics on this are pretty. Pretty darn good. I actually do a weird amount of like tapped harmonics in my bass gigs because I get a little bored and I, I was trying to do it on a jazz master the other day and it did not work out very well. <laughs> so there you have it. That is the Squire Contemporary Active Starcaster. What'd you think? Let me know in the comments and please check out the recommended video on the screen here, the Tom DeLonge Signature Starcaster. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like that one too. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Hit up the affiliate links in the video description. Until next time, my name is Emily. Goodbye.